If you go to Rod Robin Miller later on this afternoon, and I do recommend you all go to Robin Miller later on this afternoon. If you've not heard Robin speak, it will just absolutely blow your mind. You'll want to record it because you'll want to remember every word he says, and if you write something down, you'll miss the next bit. Um, and so Robin, you know, clearly, he's one of my colleagues. Uh, he's, he, and he is going to talk about the difference between evidence-informed and evidence... I hope I'm not stealing his thunder. And the difference between sort of saying that something is based on evidence, research evidence, and saying that it's informed by. And what we would say is that we're informed by. We cannot, because of the time constraints and the financial restraints, we can't do um, a full research evaluation of every piece of um, curriculum material we put, put out there. So we do what we think is the next best thing, which is to use the evidence that is out there to help us write the best resources we can. And so we've just started this new BEST project, and we started with, with um, a seminar a couple of months ago where we invited people from across the science education sort of world. So we had science teachers there, we had science education researchers there, we had publishers there, uh, we had people who are consultants, who are authors, who write resources for, for science education. We had, we had that whole set there. And we wanted to begin by saying, what do they think are the issues? Now, whether you count that as evidence or not when you're talking about what the questions are, but so I want to talk today about some of the issues that we think are relevant to 11 to 14 science teaching and some of the research evidence that we'll be looking at. And, I, and this is going to be, I hope, a discussion. It's not going to be me just talking. So there'll be an opportunity for you to chip in and say things that we've missed or that we haven't got. So ahead of the seminar, we asked people what do they think were the core issues and to send us in one or more questions which sort of really sort of they thought were questions that they would want to be answered by the project. And then we kind of sorted those out into four themes, which became the themes for the day. So there are issues about what's 11 to 14 science education about. There are issues about progression and learning and assessment of learning, issues to do with student engagement and then pedagogy and teacher support. So those are the four strands that I'm going to talk about today and talk about what evidence is there. And the first thing they have to say is that there isn't evidence for everything. You know, science education researchers are kind of niche people. So they'll, they'll pick a bit that they think is really interesting for them and they'll look at lots of evidence for that. But there are areas of education where there isn't much research done. Very often, because it's very hard to do. It's very hard to pick out why, well, you know, if you, if you do an intervention, and you, which is the way the science of education research tends to happen is you sort of say, okay, we'll, we'll do this with this group of students. We won't do it with that, and we'll see where the outcomes are different. But those students aren't living in a vacuum except for, it's not like a drug. It's, it's not like saying, we'll give those the drug and we'll give those the placebo. And if we have a big enough group, we'll know that we've done it right. Because those children are having all sorts of drugs and influences. Sorry, well, probably not drugs, but well, it may be drugs. But they're having all sorts of other influences on them that are different from that group. And it might be that you've got that science group and you're doing it with them and you're not doing it with those, but that science group are also together for English or maths or something else, and that group are together for something else. So you don't know that what you're doing. So all you can do is say, let's give this a go and see what. So the evidence is difficult to get hold of very often. So the first thing question was about purposes of 11 to 14 science education. And these are the, the kind of questions people were saying we want to know. What key science ideas should be included? What about practical inquiry in the nature of science? Should be including that? And how does 11 to 14 fit in with what comes before and what comes after? And one of the clear messages we got was that there's a bit of a sort of fuzziness about the purposes of 11 to 14 science, and probably 11 to 14 other subjects as well, in that they've come in from primary school and they've got very disparate experiences of science at primary school. And all that 11 to 14 is to do is about preparing them for GCSE, and I've seen, you know, it used to be that GCSE was a two-year course, now it's a three-year course, now there are people starting it in year eight, and, you know, so is, is there no longer an 11 to 14 curriculum? Should we go back to thinking about an 11 to 16 curriculum? Now, that's, I think that's what we should be doing, myself, I think we should be saying, but that only works if you can be sure that where you want your current year sevens to be in five years' time hasn't changed by the time they get there, you know? So if you knew, if you were sure now 
that GCSEs in sciences were not going to change between now and your year sevens getting to do their GCSEs, you could say, let's think about this as a continuum. And I think that's what you should do anyway, even though you can't be sure, because it's the best guess you've got. And you're fairly sure the content is going to change. Nothing's going to change that much that it wouldn't be a good place to start. So I think we should be thinking about an 11 to 16 curriculum. Oh, notice we're calling this 11 to 14. We're not calling it Key Stage 3. So we're talking about early, early secondary. And, you know, if you're in Scotland, it'll be slightly different. And if you're in Wales, it might be different. And if you're in Ireland, and if you're anywhere else in the world, it will be slightly different. So... What does early secondary ed science education look like is what we're talking about. So this is what happens. These are some of the... I can't see this, and I haven't got it on this screen here, so I, I, I can't read it out to you because I can't see it. Um, so the things that people were talking about were that it shouldn't be just a filler. It should be have its own identity is what people felt. Need to engage and enthuse, and we'll come back to that when we talk about engagement. Big ideas, that's one of the big the things that people talk about a lot in science, and I'll sort of come to sort of what we mean by that, if you don't know, uh, shortly, um, including the nature of science. Opportunities for practical inquiry. There's a very real feeling amongst quite a lot of the people at the seminar, teachers particularly at the seminar, that 11 to 14 is where you've got a bit of space, a bit of slack to do things. You're not on this kind of treadmill of exam. I think the treadmill of exam has got better since we... Um, got rid of key stage three sat since we've gone to a linear assessment. So you've not got sort of modules keep coming up. It's all the exams at the end. The treadmill should be less obvious. Um, developing scientific literacy, science is for all. So every student should come out of their science education understanding what science is about. And there was quite a lot of talk about careers, and that kind of comes back into engagement as well. Because this is at the age where 11 to 14 is the age where children begin to see what they're going to be. So we need, if we, we need to include in that picture of what they might be so they've got some idea of what it might be like to use science in whatever context that means. And that doesn't necessarily mean go on and do a science degree. So for the purpose of science education, is there some evidence about what the purpose of 11 to 14 science education is? And the things that we, one might read are these... Perhaps these, these are the things that we would look at. Uh, big, ideas became big, big ideas became big words when, when Harland published her first uh, document, which was which is on the, freely downloadable from the ASC website. And then in 2015, she had a follow-up document, which is about working with the sci big ideas in science education. If you don't have those, if you're a science teacher and you don't have those, then you know, do, do get hold of them. The present, this presentation, I think, will be available somewhere afterwards on some research website or OUP. We'll say yes. We'll say yes. Well, we'll put it, we'll put it on the blog post I made if it doesn't go anywhere else. Um, Beyond 2000 was a report which Robin Miller and Jonathan Osborne put together pre-2000 uh, about what science education should be like in the 21st century. And that has lots of thinking. And then another document which I think... Uh, is worth looking at if you're thinking about what should we be doing is an American document, a framework for uh, K-12 science education, which informed their new um, sort of kind of national curriculum in the States. So this is thinking. It's not evidence in the sense of research evidence, but it's what people who've thought about science education, and if you look at all the names on all of this, you know, they're the great and the good of science education over the last 20, 30 years in, in the UK, well, across the world, because Wynne Harlands, is, uh, she had her team came from across the world. Um, so if you, want, if you don't want to start from scratch, who would want to start from scratch when lots of people have done lots of thinking already? It's not evidence. It's not research evidence about what should be. You can't say what should be, but you have to make decisions, and those are places to think about. Those are the places that, that we'll be going, I'm sure, and other things as well. 